Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here right there. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread. And I'd love to, again, see what you're up to. And I'll try and answer your questions as we get going. But let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. One last thing I was going to mention too, because I don't know how much time I'm going to need to turn all this on. Maybe it's ready to go and, you know, the real me, the live me can just, just cut this off and we can get to it. But in case I need a little bit more time, let me just tell you about myself. So my name is Derek Mitchell. We've been over that. Also, uh, I live in Montana, in Kalispell, Montana, actually, which is just outside of Glacier National Park. And I've got four daughters and a wife, and we have tons of fun doing outdoor things like riding bicycles. We float the river on our paddle boards. That's a ton of fun. I love to downhill mountain bike. That's a ton of fun. When it snows for like nine months out of the year, we like to go snowboarding and skiing. So uh, I feel like I'm rambling. So at any point, Derek, just go ahead and just you know, let's do this, let's get live, let's start teaching. What is going on, Miles? My dog just came to say hello. Hi, Miles. Let's say hello to the people, come here. Come here, come say hi. This is Miles, my poodle. We're working on his mohawk. Oh, thanks. Kisses. Oh.
Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. All right, guys, are you ready to go? It's gonna be a good stream. I can't wait to see what I do because currently I have no idea what we're gonna do. That's why the stream title is called Top Secret Graphic Design because it's still a secret. <clears throat> so it might be a little bit quiet in the chat today because uh, I didn't send out an email saying I was going live. My family, my girls, and my son, I can't say it, I gotta change the intro video. So the intro video, uh, that was my, my kiddos playing on the beach. My wife and I over in Salt Creek in Washington State. Oh, we got a fly in the stream today. What's up, buddy? He wants to come say hi. Look at that. That's going to be annoying. Get him. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that was in Salt Creek in Washington State. I love that place. Beautiful drone footage. Uh, just lots of fun. Good memories. My kids running around catching crabs and all kinds of fun things and uh, on the beach there. But our family has grown since then. We've actually got two new kids since that video was shot. Uh, another baby girl and a baby boy. So I got to update that. I no longer have just four daughters. I've got four daughters and a son. So maybe one of these days on the stream, that's what I'll do is I'll update the feed, update that intro video. But hey, guys, uh, enough about me. If you're here tuning in, say hello in the chat. Let me know you're watching. I'm watching the chat roll right now. Hopefully our audio is synced. I've been having some syncing issues on Behance with the audio staying in sync. Uh, not sure why, but um, just refreshing some stuff here. To, yeah, it's all right. It's all good. So what's up? What's up? Did I edit that? I did actually. What's up, Gavin Carl? Good to see you back from Twitch. I did edit that video and I took the video. Uh, I took the drone shots and um, that was a that running shot next to my daughter flying a kite was me running with a little GoPro Hero 5 Black. So it was before stabilization. Um, now I've got GoPros that make it super solid, but that was, I was running as fast as I could barefoot holding the GoPro, pointing it that general direction. That was fun, uh, fun little backstory. 
So yeah, I edited that video and uh, I need to make some new intro videos. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanna show off some of the cool things that I just got back. So uh, a couple weeks ago, was it that long ago? Maybe a week ago, uh, we did these stickers, a simple circle sticker. Whoops, I'm messing stuff up. Um, and this blue line, it's difficult to see, but that's where the trim mark is. So I did that sticker. I did this sticker where it's a clear background with white. And then we did this sticker, the blue line is a trim line. Well, hey, check it out. I have this exact sticker in hand. It shipped, it arrived. So cool. So there it is, the stickers came, came in the mail. I can start using them. I could make a stream editing my new video. My concern with doing that, um, and I grabbed my wife's laptop, uh, right now I'm just streaming off of my own machine and I'm afraid that if I try and edit video and stream, it's just gonna start smoking. So what I'll do is I'll gather assets for that. That's a great idea because it needs to happen. I need to do that. And then here is the same sticker, but in a holographic print. Oh, and it's gonna get weird because I'm using a, uh, yeah, isn't that, I'm using a green screen effect. So anything that turns green is turning transparent. So the background, look at that, the background shows through. That's funny. But uh, anyway, super cool sticker. And then I did the circle ones as well. So here are those circle stickers. So there's the white one, just a basic circle sticker. And then here it is again with the holographic print. If you guys like that and you wanna check it out, these are printed from Sticker Mule. So uh, I'm really, really happy with how they turned out pretty reasonably priced. I mean, they're, they're a little expensive if you're only ordering a few of them. I mean, so you, you know, it makes the most sense to order a bunch, but you can order just a few of them. You know, maybe you want just a couple, put one on the back of your laptop uh, display or put one on, I don't know, your guitar case or whatever you want to, wherever you want to put it. Notebooks. Uh, what am I looking for? Sticker mule. But hey, well, I have my website up, check it out. This is a great place, DerekMitchell.com. I've got a bunch more tutorials right here on this tutorials link. If you guys want to check them out, some freebies on my YouTube channel. You can also join the newsletter. Typically you stay up to date on when I'm going live. Today I didn't send out an email, uh, but you can join that email there, give you some freebies, and then a bunch of cool tutorials you can check out later. And then as well as the courses, check out the courses, specifically the vault. This is what this channel is sponsored by. So all proceeds from this go to help keep this stream alive. So check that out. Okay, back to Sticker Mule. So Sticker Mule is where I got these things printed. StickerMule.com. I'm not an affiliate. I'm not, I don't get paid to tell you guys about this. I just, I just actually use these as you see here um, for my stickers. And uh, if we go to stickers and we come down here to um, die cut stickers. So that's what these plain white stickers are. And I've got a pile of them here. Like like I've got a whole a whole bunch of them. I've got a whole actually I've got a whole box of them. Let's pull that up real quick. So when you get it, oh, let's make sure that I'm not. There we go. So you get a box full of oh geez. <laughs> Watch it hits a button, kills the stream. That'd be bad. All right. Anyway, it comes. They come shrink wrapped in like clumps of. 25, 30, 50. I don't know how many are in the pack, but, uh, and then they give you, what's up? I see you on Behance food art illustrations. Hey guys, I posted my first project. If you can leave feedback. Thanks. What's up food art. We will check your stuff out here in a minute. So I'm digging down into the box because also in this box, they give you hot sauce. How cool is that? Oh, what is this? Oh, hey, and more samples. And the deep down, buried underneath everything else. Oh, here's another coaster. Check it out. We just ordered some of these. Um, and this does confirm what I thought. So they've got a front side and the back side's blank. Still cool though. Still gonna go on my desk and get used right here. Oh, and look at this, kiss cut stickers. So what that means, uh, here's this, okay. 
Uh, a kiss cut is where the backing is still there, but it just barely breaks through the top sticker. See that? So if I peel that off the background there, that's a kiss cut. I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Oh, I don't wanna put this right here on my guitar case next to me. I've got this awesome guitar case. All my pedals go in and it's just covered in stickers. So that's what we're gonna do with that. Oh, I don't have my knife or anything. Maybe I can peel the tape off. This is that super industrial packing tape that doesn't, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, all right, let's check this out. Big reveal. <laughs> so cool. I love it. And what's even cooler is if you wanted to, like there's like literally this exact sticker that they use to wrap around this glass bottle. If you have some kind of a product or an Etsy store, uh, you can have labels made and look at how professional that looks. So cool. Heat intensity, four out of five jalapeno peppers. Where's my camera? There we go. So that's the mule sauce they send with your order when you order, I think a hundred dollars or more. Um, another example of a die cut sticker. Also going on my guitar case and another die cut sticker also going on my guitar case. All right, fun stuff. So, um, yeah, it's always fun when you actually make stuff and then get to see it, see it in production. So if you guys want to check out the entire process, uh, behance.net slash Mitchell's garage is my profile. And then go to the live streams. Hey, look, look at me. Look at me. There I am. Okay. Um, somewhere in my replays. Oh, you know what? Bummer. Okay. This specific one. Dang it. Um, for some reason, it the file got corrupted on the Behance thing. And so the replay is not available here. But if you go to, um, let's see, uh, youtube.com slash Derek Mitchell. Uh, all my videos. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. Um, what, are, what am I looking for? Mm, a week ago, design stickers. I think it was this one. Pretty sure it was, no, that's only eight seconds. Yeah, I had a weird bug. Not me, the system, something went weird. Uh, this one right here, you kind of see, I need to make thumbnails too. That's what we could do today is make thumbnails. All my streams have, crappy stuff. Okay. So here, yeah. If you watch the stream, oh, I made a button Did I make stickers. I thought I did stickers on this one too. Yeah. Oh yeah. These stickers are coming next. So I made some uh, third bowl and co stickers. Those will get here in a couple days. So, uh, yeah, so check it out. If you want to see the entire process, those replays are up. Okay. Um, what next, guys? Let's see. So let's check out right here. What's up, Food Art Illustrations? Posted first project. Let's check it out. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Is it Marche? I see you on Facebook. Yeah, definitely. You can ask me questions there. I see you. Very cool work here. Food art illustrations. Oh, wow. That's cool. I dig it. Lots of stuff going on. Personal characters, Japanese anime style. Yeah. So, um, Marche, so what questions you got? Hit me with it. Today's kind of a random stream. Um, I was, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, my, so my, my girls are out at the river. <clears throat> Mama took them out so I could stream and have some quiet in the house. Uh, so they're out having fun. I think they're gonna go paddle boarding and float the river and do a fun, bunch of fun stuff. So, uh, that'll be cool. So we're hanging out. So, uh, we're live. We're going live. This is my window. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to design yet. So I just flipped the switch and went live and figured I'd let you guys ask questions, do some Q and a, maybe do some designing while you guys are <clears throat> hanging out in the chat. Uh, yeah, showing off the new stickers we got printed. I'm so pumped for these. They look real good on that, on that, um, holographic paper, super cool stuff. Um, let's see. 
All right, so while you guys think about questions and what's up, I'm gonna start making some stuff. I also need to make stuff for my stream, like some overlays. <clears throat> uh, okay, that's a great question. Um, so Marche, so first of all, thank you. Um, the comments tough to read on the screen, but basically you bought the graphic design course. Uh, so thank you very much. You're doing the boat and the sailor video. It's awesome. You're learning a lot, but you feel like you're missing something. So full disclosure, full, full disclosure. When I made that, that section, um, oh, so you're in the vault. So you have access to everything. So are you asking like, is that the right course out of the stuff that I've taught or you want to learn Photoshop and should you take something else? Is that the question? So uh, anyway, full disclosure with that bootcamp course, I need to update it because we're in Photoshop 2021 now. And there's just, there's a little, most of it's the same. Most of it's the same, but specifically the selections. I don't know if you did the poster one where the hair selection with the guy in the hair. Um, the selections have changed a little bit. So uh, I need to fix it because it can be discouraging because it's tough to follow along. Uh, okay, so ultimately you need to learn how to make graphics for websites. Well, hey, that's something we could do today. We can make graphics for websites. Um, are you building websites? Or are you, um, are you just trying to like update like a WordPress website for you or somebody else or like your Behance portfolio or what's going on? I'm gonna jump over to the uh, Behance comments real quick. Uh, maybe, did I close that window on accident? Probably. There we go. All right. Um, <clears throat> so you build them in, in WordPress sites, but don't know graphics. Okay. Well, let's have some fun. Um, what theme do you use? Uh, need to learn and not have to outsource. Got it. Okay. Um, do you have the Creative Cloud subscription? Do you have Photoshop and Illustrator? All right, so while we're getting caught up, I love this kind of stuff. I'm so glad you jumped in, Marche, because I didn't know what to, what to do today. This is perfect. Pro. Procreate? What do you mean, pro? Um, okay, so... Okay, so let's let's first let's see. Hmm. Okay, let's I'm trying to think of the best approach. Okay, so Marche, do you have my? So if you have the vault, then you have my WordPress course too. So also things have changed a little bit with that too. Oh, got you. Pro is the theme by Themeco. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Themeco Pro. I used to use the Themeco X theme, I think it is. Let's take a look at that. Use X2. So I used to use X. I don't like it as much now as I used to. Um I don't need the version X Pro. Pro's the upgraded version. Got oh yeah, right. I remember that. Okay, so I have that too. Duh. Um, I actually went to a conference with them. They had like I don't know a small group of people who were because I used to use their theme exclusively and had a bunch of licenses. So we went to Las Vegas and I actually got to meet the creators uh, of the Theme Co themes and it was awesome. So sorry, I'm <laughs> duh slow slow here, but um, okay. So we let's see. Man, it's been forever since I've downloaded that license. Where did I even? Okay, so I have the licenses through Theme Forest. All right, let's see, Marche. So what we could do. I'm going to open up local. 
So local is an app that lets you create um, WordPress sites locally, quickly. I can use one of yours if you want. Do you have what? Uh, let's see. How do you want to do that? Let's make a graphic for your stuff, Marche. Let's have fun with it. Install update. Ah, uh, fine. Um, so we could do, we could make a graphic for you. Um, we could, um, let's see, what's the best approach. So we probably need like a header graphic or just in general, like web images. Um, oh, do I want to license to pro? Gotcha. Um, my, my hesit, sorry guys, my hesitation as I'm going through this is thinking through when I log into stuff and because I'm live, I can't cut out and edit and blur license keys and stuff. Um, yeah, let's see one of your sites, Marche. If you got, is there one that like, are you just in general, you're trying to like create graphics in general. So let's, let's maybe, um, here, let's just, let's just kind of fumble through this together and see what happens, everybody. All right. So I'm using an app called local. Okay. So if you do a Google search, Uh, you could search for local by flywheel. I use flywheel hosting. All right. <clears throat> so here's what I need to change the homepage. Do you mind? Okay. So let's see. Let me pull this up real quick and take a look everybody. Everything's on the site's placeholders. Okay, so let's go to slash slash. I have to type it all out. Dot. I gotta create dot com. That's a cool domain. All right. <clears throat> so does this look right? Hey, that looks right. I see your face. <laughs> okay, so we got some some lorem ipsum. Uh, it looks like what you did was you did you pull in one of their like demo themes to get kind of started. All right, just checking it out. Okay, so let's let's start with something simple like the back. Well, let's see. Why don't you tell me where do you want to start? What do you want to do? Okay, you designed it. it looks great. It looks great. Simple and clean. I like the colors. Okay, so we gotta get some text. We got your photo, portfolios, photography. Okay, so that redirects. So is this, um, it redirects to this the photo at the top. Okay, so this background image with the camera behind it. Can we make a graphic? I'm confused, can we make a graphic, Teresa Balland, you teach me. Okay, all right, well, let's just, here's here's my basic process for making, we'll just, we'll just start for making an image, okay? So I'm gonna jump into Photoshop because it makes, sense to my brain for this. All right, let's we're going to make a new document. Um, okay, got it. Didn't know what to do. Just grab a stock image and put words on it. Okay, cool. Um, our music got really intense. We're going to switch songs here. Okay, so I'm, I'm in Photoshop. Oh, I forgot. Shoot. I don't have Spotify open to do that button. All right, sorry guys. I need a new playlist. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, so you can make a web image just about in any software you can imagine. From an iPad to, I mean, you could probably even do it in like pages, right? Or on Microsoft Word. I wouldn't recommend it at all, um, but, but you could. So typically I work in Photoshop when I'm making web graphics. And one quick shortcut you could start with, these tabs across the top, 
it's easy to overlook them because there's a lot going on. Uh, but if you if you come over here and click on web, it'll default to some blank sizes. And you can click right here to view all presets. Okay. And you can even scroll down and there's a handful of free templates. There, Some of them are helpful. Some of them are meh, whatever. Uh, but it's a place to explore. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new document. Typically... I make my stuff for web pages about 2000 pixels wide. If you have a specific theme in your case, you're using the X pro theme by theme co uh, check because sometimes they'll have like a little note about either in the documentation or, or in the place you're putting in and say, Hey, you know, uh, images should be between 1500 to 2000 pixels wide by like 300 to 500 pixels tall. They'll tell you how about how big it should be. So, all right, you're following along. Awesome. Okay, so you got a new document. We're going to make it 2,000 pixels wide. Let's make it about... Okay, this is going to be a full screen. It's going to scale for full screen, it looks like. Okay, so typically if I was doing a web image about like, like a banner, like a sliver, I'd probably do it about 500 pixels. Okay. Uh, not 5,000. That's that's this here. Don't, don't push the button yet, Marche. Okay, I'm going to click create and that's if I was gonna do like a sliver that's about the size I would do however I'm gonna undo that new document web the web most common or web large right this is typically I just click that and it's gonna set at 1920 by 1080 wide resolution I used to leave leave this at 72 you probably still could lately I've been putting it 144 uh, cause I don't need it at 300 DPI for like a hot, for like a high res print file, but for these, uh, ult or these UHD screens, uh, these 4k screens, whatever, um, the resolution, I feel like it looks better when I do that to the resolution. Now the thing we're playing with, let's go ahead and create this. So I got 1920 by 1080 and 144 pixels on the resolution here. Click create and one oh, shoot. One more thing. Okay. You'll notice I have an artboard here. I'm gonna go to file new same thing web web large this little checkbox here for artboards you can turn that on and off i i like to use artboards and i'm about to show you why that's probably turned off for you by default so when you click oh and then we want to make sure you're in rgb color it should do that because we're already in the web space here click create and yours probably looks like this so in your layers panel you probably only have this background Sorry, it's just me and the dogs home. I just make sure they weren't getting into the garbage. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to come up here to this little drop down and change my workspace. I'm using the Essentials workspace. I'm going to go ahead and click Reset Essentials. So hopefully you and I are kind of looking at the same thing. So the difference between artboard and not using an artboard. Okay, right here. Literally these two files. So this one has artboards, this one doesn't. They're the exact same size and everything. Now, what, the only real difference, if I if I peel out this layers tab and dock it to the right here, you can see I've got an artboard up here. If I click on the other one, there's no artboard. There's literally just layers, okay? So think of an artboard kind of like a group, all right? So let me, let's do a couple things real quick. So we've got this layer. Uh, let's, let's throw an image in there. Um, what kind of an image do we want? What kind of an image? What is this for? This is a, I got to create, <clears throat> I got to create productions video. Let's see. I don't know what you want. So something showing videography, photography. Okay. Video camera. So I'm in Vato Elements. I love Envato Elements. Um, I do have an affiliate account, but I don't even know my link. So don't even worry about it, but uh, check it out. I'm going to come down here to photos, search for video camera. Okay. So we've got some, some cool stuff here. Um, I'm guessing, let's see. Hmm. I actually kind of like the artistic one of these guys walking, but let's just kind of scroll, scroll. Do you want something? Well, let's see. That's 
That's awesome. Okay, so you've got Envato Elements too, so that'll work out great. Um, not that it doesn't matter, but it kind of doesn't matter because we can kind of play around with stuff here. But it kind of matters. You got to find the right image. Oh no. <clears throat> finding images and finding fonts, I usually get derailed pretty fast. So I give myself just a couple minutes to kind of scroll through, see what's available, see if anything calls my name. All right, how about videography? Or how about video editing? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, well, this is just for learning purposes, right? So let's, what are you, what are you thinking? Oh yeah, you're welcome, no problem. Um, all right, I'm just gonna do a couple, cause it's free. That's one thing I love, well, it's not free. I pay for it, um, but I can download as much as I want. It doesn't matter. So let's, um, yep. Why is it not giving me the download? There we go, add and download. Okay, so that's downloading. Um, I'm going to go back. Let's see. Let's just find a couple. We're going to work a little faster. We're going to speed it up here. Download. Hey, Marche, is the stream, is my audio and the video in sync? On Facebook, at least, it's probably doing okay. I've been having issues in some other places. Sure, why not? Awesome. Yes, I'm in sync. And the leg isn't too, leg. I say leg. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, leg, lag, whatever. I digress. Hey, you would appreciate this. Um, look what I, look what I just got. plugged in so I couldn't just do it with one hand. Check it out. It's a new Black Magic 6K cinema camera with a Sigma art lens and the T5 SSD on the top. We've got three of these things. Uh, I wish I could say I do personally, but it's for work, but still. I get to be the one to use it. Super exciting. Uh, yeah, so right now, actually what I'm using for my main camera is just a Canon 80D though, because it's got a better autofocus, ironically. So <laughs> when I'm running, running by myself, running solo, I got to make sure I'm in focus. All right, download. I'm downloading like a million photos. I'm a little bit distracted, but that's okay. This is typically how I work. Like I'll, I'll go through, I'll find some options. Uh, we'll call that good. Um, Sony mirrorless. Yeah. I almost switched. I got real close, thought about it and then didn't. Okay. So back to our Photoshop document. Let's, uh, let's kind of work a little bit organized. So I'm going to my files. I'm going to go to my live streams. I'm going to make a new folder. What is today? July 10th. So let's do 21. seven, 10. And I do it this way. So that way it stacks things in order. Marche web graphics. Behance live. Marche web. Boom. There we go. Okay. So let's make a new folder in here. We'll call it assets. Let's throw in all of these that we just downloaded. <clears throat> Also, I feel like there's a million ways to work. Did I just duplicate that? Okay, so we've got a couple of photos to work with, a couple ideas. And you might love the photo as is. Uh, so if we look at this thing right now, it's 4.6 megabytes. So 
a good rule of thumb is to try and keep it under, especially if it's your homepage, it's your main image. I try to keep it under 300 kilobytes, okay? This is the number. The best practices change. Maybe check with Google on that. But that's just kind of where I fall on things, what I try to do. Uh, so, okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about this uh, file setup here. So let's go ahead and um, we'll just save this as... Uh, let's go back to, I need, okay. So then the other thing I'll do is I'm working on a project live streams. Here's this thing. I'll just drag that folder over here to the side under my favorites. And that way it's easier to come back to in between stuff. Okay. So now let's call this, um, oh, good grief. What would I call it? I gotta go look at something else I've done. Typically what I do, I have a new job template file. Let's just copy that. I'll paste it in here. Maybe, oh, I'm in the save as window. Hold on, hold that thought. Let me go back into finder. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go to open a new finder. I'm gonna go to my design, new job. I'll copy it. And then typically like I rename them the year first. So um, the year 2000 or year 2000. Um, 2020 or 2021. So obviously I haven't done a lot of jobs lately because I've been live streaming and making courses, but uh, and now I have a full-time job. So I work on a different server for that kind of stuff. But my freelance stuff, this is kind of how it looks. Um, so what I would do in this case, let's say you're a client, I would just duplicate this command D and I would give it the name. So it's, uh, um, oops, come back here. I'm gonna hit return on my keyboard quickly to get into the name. So 21, zero zero five so the year and then the job number zero zero five marche what is this um web graphics okay like that's how i would set up my project file all right so then i've got my assets and in here i'd have like any docs that were sent or fonts or ideas or photos my design files so if it's an illustrator or photoshop this is maybe a little more organized than it needs to be like you could probably just dump everything in here because you're not going to have a ton and then file sent. So anything that I send to a client, so comps, anything they've seen, any any versions, and then finals, like what actually lives there. So that's how I would approach a, a project, like a final project. Now for, like, I gotta switch screens. I gotta make sure there's nothing top, top secret I'm about to show you. All right. Um, I'm just looking right now at some, I wanna show you some things, I don't know if, all right. Um, yeah, I can show you this. <clears throat> so another way that I work, so this is the build for a web project. So I call it build. Um, I've got the editable files all just smashed in, in here. So the PSD files and the home hero video. So I made a homepage video, which isn't, so I've got all the footage for that. So, so right where we're about to put this camera, I made an actual looping video background. So I've got the footage, I've got the After Effects project, I've got uh, the glitch templates and stuff that I downloaded from Envato Elements, like everything's just in there, okay? And then those are the editable files. Then the images, these are the exported, the, the crunched down version of everything that actually just got uploaded. So that all lives in here. Uh, and then some other stuff. So let's jump back over to your thing real quick. We've got these assets. Let's make a new folder. We'll just call it design files. Okay. All right, so now I've got a place to save this document. So let's save this one. We're back in Photoshop. I'm gonna save it. Maybe. Oh, I haven't done anything. So if I hit command S, it's not going to do anything for me. So let's, let's go to file, save as. Let's jump into that folder, into our design files. And we're going to call this, whew, um, I've got to create header artboards. Okay. I'm just going to copy all this. I'm gonna leave it as a Photoshop file. Uh, I like to embed an sRGB, so this is really important. So an sRGB uh, color profile is more universal. So 
I'm on a Mac. I'm on Dell screens. Sometimes I'm on an iPhone. <clears throat> uh, my kids have Kindle tablets. Uh, my wife has an iPad. Um, your client might have a PC or an Android or might be looking at something on a TV. Like there's just so many ways to see the artwork. Uh, every screen that you're using is going to be a little different, right? Even the brand new iPod, uh, not iPad, uh, iPads with the XDR display or whatever the heck it is like crazy, right? So an sRGB profile has all of the overlapping colors. So it's the, the highest chance of the color, let's say red, looking the same across the board, okay? Uh, so whatever your artwork is, it's gonna look the closest uh, if you use this profile. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so let's click save. All right, so this one's saved and we're gonna jump over here to Untitled 2. I'm gonna save this one also. I'll just click on this name so it loads it. <clears throat> I'll delete this and we're just gonna call this, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now, okay? Embed the profile, click save. All right, <clears throat> so typically I would be flying through this much faster, but I wanna make sure you're following along or at least that I'm making sense. Uh, plus right now we're talking about these artboards. So what I love about artboards, let's go back to that finder window with our assets. And I can just drag and drop right into this. Uh, in some of my courses that I've taught that, some students had a problem with that working on a, on a PC. I've also, you can also drag and drop down over the Photoshop icon and it'll just open it up as a separate image. So this is the actual image. And we can see, look at this. It's like, it's almost 5,000 pixels wide. Okay. So, so maybe you just want to bring the photo right in just crop it and be done with it. So we hit the letter C to get our crop tool. We've got the original ratio, or we can do width, height, and resolution. So I've got the crop tool selected and up here in the options bar, I'm gonna click on this and go to width, height, and resolution. And I might change this to 2000 pixels wide by let's say a thousand pixels tall. No, not 200, 2000. There we go. And we see it's kind of close. <clears throat> so you might have to play around with those numbers. We can crop this to 72 pixels per inch or like I said I kind of like to do 144 just because there's enough displays now that and the internet's faster it's I like my images to be as crispy as possible all right so now what's going to happen as soon as I click this little check box it's going to crop it to that size now if I go to view and I go to 100% so command one I can see exactly how big this is going to be. So on your website, it's going to actually scale up a little bit. If you've got a big screen, um, I've got 27 inch 4k monitors right now that I'm using. And so sometimes things look a little smaller to me, but here's, here's the bread and butter right here. Okay. Marche. So you've got your image. You've, you've done some things. We're just talking about the JPEG right now. We'll come back and we'll do some stuff in the Photoshop document. But if I go to file export, export as and the shortcut is mash your hands on the keyboard. That's the shortcut. That's how you do it. <laughs> it's a uh, option shift command and W. Okay. So we're going to click on that. You can also right click over here and go to export as right on the layer name. Okay. So we get this window open and right now our scale is one X where this comes in handy is if you're making uh, like retina display, graphics. So let, so the theme co theme actually does give you a spot to do regular size and retina display. So you could add a scale right here. There's a little plus sign, uh, kind of tough to see. I'm going to click on that and I could change a scale size to maybe two X for my retina display. Okay. So right now by default, if I just spit this out as is, it's going to be 1.2 megabytes, which is too big. It needs to be compressed. Okay. Uh, so Sorry, I heard something, just making sure I'm not missing comments. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what I typically do is I crunch this down to about 70%, okay? Uh, right now, this view is set to 50%. So if I zoom in, I have a better view to see, for example, as an extreme, if I really crunch the heck out of this, depending on the image, some images reproduce a lot better than others when they're crunched down. That actually looks amazing. That can't be right. Let's zoom these guys in. 
That's not possible. Okay, so I can see, so right now on the left, we have the JPEG that we crunched down to 5%. It's only 49 or 46 kilobytes, it's tiny. We can see some banding and some artifacts showing up here in these colors. And I've got lights in front of me, so things are, it's kind of tough to see color correcting on my screen when I'm streaming. Um, but that looks pretty dang close. Like that, that does not look, how is that possible? Photoshop has obviously improved. A lot. To be honest, I, I've never really scrubbed further past like 60 or 70. Cause I'm always like, okay, that looks good. And my file size is under like right now at 57%. It's still a, it's 185 kilobytes down here. And it's 1.2 megs over here on the right. So, so the whole reason why we care about this is you want your customers or your clients, your visitors, whatever you want to call them, uh, the best user experience. You don't want them to be thinking about your website loading, right? You want to be there as, as immediately as possible. Some of that is by the host you have. I highly recommend Flywheel or WP Engine. By far, I've had the best experience with them. Um, I've had pretty terrible experience with GoDaddy in their hosting. They've got great customer service for like domain names and stuff, but the specifically their website, WordPress hosting just isn't as fast. Um, <clears throat> and so you might have an image that's compressed really well, but the website still loads slow. And that could be on the host just taking a while to show your website. So there's a lot of factors that go into web development. Okay. So uh, anyway, we're at this export window and we've crunched this down to whatever whatever makes sense uh, for whatever still looks good. And in this case, if it's gonna be a background image behind text, let's go back and kind of re remind ourselves what we're going for here. So if it's gonna be a background image, maybe even darkened up a little bit, let's take a look at how to do that next. Uh, it maybe doesn't matter. And maybe it's more important that it loads fast. So maybe you crunch this down, okay? And then when you're ready right here, double check a couple things, all this, I don't usually touch any of these image size qualities. Um, metadata, I don't really need to do anything with that right now. Color space, there it is, convert to sRGB. Make sure you're doing that, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and embed that color profile. I'll click export and it should give us two. It should give us the one X size, which is gonna be 2000 pixels, okay. And the 2X, this is something you would use if you're like exporting a logo. Typically, this is how you'd use it if you have a logo design and you want a, a 2X version to, to serve up with a uh, Retina display code. Click export. I'm going to come down here in your folder and we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call it exports. Just makes sense to me. Or you can call it images. Images is a popular one uh, in web development. <clears throat> we'll click open. Okay, so now let's go back and check that out. How'd we do? We got exports. We should have two images. Okay, so we've got background. It just named it whatever my layer name was. Okay. It's 59 kilobytes. It's spacebar. It looks amazing to me. I mean, there's things that could be better for sure, but for it, for what we're using it for, to have it be that tiny, that's amazing. Now here it is at 2x, so it's almost twice as uh it's still under still 154 kilobytes, still tiny. Um I'm not seeing the image size metadata here like I used to do. It's behind my head, whatever. Um, but if I hit spacebar, that's a 2X version of the same image, okay? All right, so now we know how to export. Let's take a look at one other thing. So let's say you like this and you're like, hey, I just wanna make a quick tweak to this. Well, currently it's locked. Typically what I'll do is hit Command J to jump cut a new layer or just double click on it and it's gonna unlock that layer. Lots of ways, there's a hundred ways to do the same thing in Photoshop, okay? What we're going to do, and again, there's a hundred ways to do this as well. What I'm about to show you, uh, you could put a color overlay in the CSS code on your website, or you could export your image exactly how you want to look. We're going to come up here to image adjustments down to levels. And I'm going to show you like three different ways to do this. Okay. We'll go to levels and we can control our output levels here. We're just going to crunch this down. Okay. And now, Guess what? You've got space to put some text over the top of this thing. Okay. So now we've got some text. Now, honestly, you wouldn't put the text in the image 
typically usually you would you would let your website put css right this is all css over the top of your image that way uh search engines can find it okay all right so we got some text now we've got some purples and blues but it looks like you're kind of doing a different color theme here so let's play with that a little bit <clears throat> and right now we're only just working over the top of this photo maybe we should be working in one of these documents so let's let's kind of move over so what we're going to do um I don't want to lose track of my thought here, but we're going to come over here to a new image and let's duplicate this one over as well. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And what I'm going to do the destination, I'm going to change this to my artboards file. So this photo layer is going to jump over. Click OK. It's still here, but it cloned it over to here as well. Okay, so I've got a couple things to work with. So let's let's explore a couple different ways we can we can play around with this. So the first I was going to play with, um, I showed you how to do image adjustments levels. Okay, I like to work with adjustment layers over here. If you don't see these adjustment layers, go to window, down to adjustments. All right, and let's play around with maybe the exposure. We'll add an exposure here. So anything below this layer is going to get darker. So for example, if I move this guy out of the way, you can see the everything below it gets darker. Okay. Also to move this really quick, I hit the command key on my space bar on my uh, keyboard. And you'll notice up here, my move tool selected and it turned off when I hit the command key, it turned off my auto select layer. So instead of grabbing whatever the top layer is, it grabs whatever is selected. I hope that makes sense. So if I click this guy and hold down command, even if I'm clicking on this photo, the one behind it is going to be the one that's moving because it's turning off this auto select layer thing. All right. <clears throat> so let's bring this back over here right now. So instead of using levels, we used an exposure adjustment because this is editable. I can bring it back. I can overexpose it. I can underexpose it way too far. All right, so that's one way to work. That's one one thing we could do. We could turn that off. We could add a new layer down here, which you can't see. Let me turn my face off. Okay, so down here, if I add a new layer, I could fill it with black. I'm hit the letter D to get the default color swatches. And then I use option delete to fill with my foreground color. So just filled it with black, but you can also go to edit down to fill and then choose your foreground color, which is whatever's in front. Okay, lots again, a million ways to do the same thing. Um, so we got black in front of here. So I could scrub this down a little bit. I could scrub down this opacity. So now I've got a black layer. I turned off my exposure and this black layer is just over the top. Okay, so we can turn that on and off or exposure, whatever. All right, well, let's let's jump back in. Let's explore how to make these colors maybe match your website, which is yellow. We got some yellows and whites going on here. All right, so I'm going to come back over here, go to my adjustments. Let's go find the hue saturation um is it better to use fill versus using a solid color super great question a lot of guys will use down here if i go to plus nope that's not what i meant to do um right here this little half circle thing for our um, adjustment layers they'll throw like a solid color adjustment layer above it pick whatever color you want doesn't matter for the sake of what i'm about to show you and so now i've got a solid color fill it's just a little bit different I see a lot more people doing that. Uh, honestly, the way we're going to work with this, it doesn't matter at all. All right, so let's go and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to click down here on this little colorize tab. Okay, so now it's colorizing the whole thing. So I can scrub this until it's close and I can adjust the saturation to make it really saturated. Okay. Um, the other thing we could do, which those are all cool, but I'm not quite getting the right yellow. Okay. So let's try something different. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go over to your website and I have a tool called sip, which I don't know if is open right now. There it is. And I can sample any color from anywhere on the screen. So I can see exactly what that color is. Click on it and come over here and start using that. 
So I could add a new solid color paste in that hex code and know this is the exact color you're using. However, look, it's below this exposure. So I gotta drag it above to see that yellow. I'm gonna turn the exposure and the hue off. And I'm gonna change this color, these blend modes here. As I hover over them, I can see different effects. What I like to do with my move tool selected to hit command. Wait, let me think about this. Let me do it without. Okay, so shift plus and minus. So I'm holding the shift key and hitting plus or minus to quickly cycle through those blend modes. Um, if I didn't have sip, what I would do, let me just set this back to normal for a second. If I didn't have sip, I would take a screenshot, command shift and the number four, click and drag. And then before I let go, I'd hold down the command. Nope. I'd hold down the control key, then let go of my mouse. It's going to capture whatever was in that box on my clipboard. I'd come into Photoshop and I just paste it in here real quick. So now I've got a little image of that. Then I'd use Photoshop's eyedropper tool and I would just sample it from here. Okay. So if you don't have sip, that's another way to get color from other places. Uh, one app you should definitely check out is called, what is it called? Let me think about that for a second. Oh my goodness. I'm having a brain freeze moment. Um, Adobe capture. You got one from Google Chrome. That's perfect. Uh, or if you're a coder, you can look in the code and figure it out that way too. Adobe Capture is an incredible app. Um, and I've got a video on it on my YouTube channel. But anyway, that's another way to, to find colors around you and sample them. Okay, so we could add a color fill over the top. And then we could kind of like cycle through and see if one of these is doing what I want it to do. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to command J to jump cut a copy so I can come back to this. Uh, let's make it black and white. <clears throat> so lots of ways to work. Adjustments. Brightness contrast. Hue sat. I could throw a hue saturation on this. Totally desaturate it. Then I can add my color over the top. Maybe multiply might do it. So now it's not fighting the colors. If I turn that off, if I turn off my hue saturation, see how the colors get weird. But when I turn that on, so that my color below is black and white, uh, that might be something you're looking for. So what I'm going to do now, let's explore these artboard functions. Okay. So if I was doing all of this in this document here, it pretty much is what it is. Like here, let me just group all this command G to group it right click duplicate group. The destination is going to be this other document here. We'll click. Okay. There we go. Command shift G to ungroup it. Now all these layers are in this one that does not have artboards. Okay. So this is one, one way of working. If you're just worried about one comp or one markup or one mockup, I jump back over here to my artboards thing. This is where it gets real fun, real fast. Okay. So I can click on this, hold on option and then click and drag a copy of my artboard over. So now I basically have two files inside of one file. I have two artboards. And if I look over here in my layers panel, here's an artboard copy and I just double click on this and I can call it artboard two, or I could call it version two, or where this could get really helpful is maybe you're working on a brand and you're building an entire campaign. All right. So maybe you've made your graphic and let's say I want to post something on Instagram so I could go, what is it? What is the Instagram size right now? Even, I don't even know. Let's just say it's 2000. Let's just say we're going to do something square, uh, 2000 by 2000. Okay. Tab. And now this artboard is exactly 2000 pixels wide by 2000 pixels tall. Let's say you have an email list and you want to send out an email. You want to build your header. So once you've done the work once, you can just copy it over and let's say, so in MailChimp, we'd want this to be like 580 pixels, not 89, 580 or 600, depending on your padding on the image, let's call it 350 pixels tall. Okay. So let's say this is going to be your header image for your email campaign. So what's cool about this, we could call this, um, 580 pics, we'll call it MailChimp. 
580 picks. Whatever. It, honestly, you can call it whatever the heck you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, so we've got our MailChimp artboard for our email campaign. We've got our, let's call this social. Let's call it, let's just call it Instagram. Um, guys, you again, you can name it whatever you want. Um, version two web header header version two. Okay. And we'll copy that command C to copy it. Command V to paste that name version one. Okay. So now we've got some, we've got some pretty interesting things happening here, right? In just a few clicks, we have a lot of digital assets to work with. Okay. Um, for those of you hanging on and, and you don't want to watch the entire stream, here's how you're like ready to go. Let's just export these real quick. Let's say they're done. This looks terrible, but let's just pretend. Let's just kind of show you. I'd go to file and I go down to export. And this time I would choose instead of export as I would choose artboards to files. Okay. Click on that. Let's tell it where to put it. So we'll browse. Let's go find. Marche's stuff here. We'll go to exports. I'm going to call this one artboard export demo. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to kind of keep things sorted here. All right. <clears throat> so this is going to be the prefix. So your file names will have whatever's in this box. In this case, it uses my file name. I only want to export the artboard content. So only what's inside of my artboard. And then it's gonna add my artboard name, so MailChimp 580 pixels to the end of this file name, okay? Do I wanna include the background? Um, sure. The file type, we're gonna do a JPEG. We have a few different options here. If you want transparency, we could do that and then turn off the background. So now if there's any transparency in the file or anything we wanna see through, like a logo and you want the background to show through, then you would do it with a transparent background. So you don't want to include the background and you'd want it to be a PNG file. But in this case, we want the background, which would be white. Do a JPEG. <clears throat> now quality. Okay, so because we set our files up the exact size we need them to be, we could probably leave this at 12, maybe scrub it down to like seven or eight and probably get away with it. We want to include that ICC profile. That's that sRGB thing we were talking about. So that way the colors kind of match up. We don't want the artboard name. If we do that, it's going to literally put whatever the artboard name is over the top of your file. We don't want to do that. So turn that off. Click run. And it's going to go through and export each one of our artboards here. And it was successful. Awesome. Let's see what happened. Jump over here, go to our exports, the demos. Let's see what those file names look like. Okay, so <clears throat> see how it smashed the names together without a space? But hey, check it out. Each artboard got exported, even though we weren't really design, uh, done designing yet. Cool. All right, so that worked. So let's make this a little better. Let's do it one more time. File, export, artboards to files. Everything should be fine. But here I can either put like an underscore or a dash or whatever we want. Run it again. Settings should stay the same. Jump back over here. Uh Oh, I didn't pay attention to where it went. I thought the settings were the same. Where'd they go? File export artboards to files. Oh, I put it in the design files folder. Whoops. See? Okay. So here they are. No, what? Where'd they go? Exports. Oh, I see it. It was the one. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this X2 just so it's not confusing, even though I'm already confused. Okay. Our boards add the underscore JPEG artboard content. Okay. Here's what happened. So this little checkbox, export selected artboards. So over here in my layers panel, you can see this one's still selected. I could command click. Let's say I've got like 10 layers or 10 artboards. I only want a couple of them. Just hold down command and click on the ones you want before you do this. 
but what we're gonna do, yeah, because I can't select them after the fact. We're gonna do, we're gonna turn that off, and now it's gonna do every artboard that I have in this file. That's what happened. Okay. Run it. Uh, what's up, Dina? Over on Facebook, screen is super blurry now. I can't really see what you're doing. Okay. Um, that's a bummer. It maybe will come back, I hope. Give it a second. Okay, so here's this. So we fixed it. Our file names have a little underscore to them now. That should be better. <laughs> Let me see top secret. I see you over on Behance. What's up, RB? Um, all right. <clears throat> so. All right. So that's, that's how we get to the end of this. That's how we export. So let's kind of play around with this a little bit more. Uh, let's jump over here and we could turn off this photo and now the one below it shows up. Okay. We could scale this into place. That's cool. Um, let's see. And maybe I want to make a different version or experiment with some different things. So I'm going to click on this artboard. Let's turn the color off for now. Let's that. So something else I do when I'm making background images, uh, maybe we simply want to blur it more. So let's come over here to filters. A blur. Gaussian blur. It's maybe a little extreme. Okay, we could add a blur to it and just kind of blur it out and make it interesting. Okay, um, notice that I accidentally did it directly on top of my layer and I don't have a copy and it was destructive. So now I can't undo that. So maybe a better way to work is to right click. Well, you can either make a copy of it, duplicate your layer. I like to use Command J to duplicate it quickly. Uh, you can right click and copy and paste, lots of things you could do. Uh, but if we convert this to a smart object, you'll notice the difference here. It's tough to see probably on the stream, but there's a tiny little icon seeing this is a smart object versus just a regular layer. So now if I try to do the same thing, go to filter, go down to blur, do the Gaussian blur, and I say, okay, you'll notice it adds a smart filter to it. So after the fact, I can turn that filter on and off, or I can double click on it to change my mind later. So working with smart objects is really nice. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got a subtle blur. That's kind of cool. Uh, maybe you want to add a new layer on top of it. And sometimes I'll sample colors from the edge here. Get my gradient tool, the letter G. Up here in the options bar, I want to use the second one over, which goes from foreground to transparent. So whatever's in the front, whatever's my foreground color to transparent, click OK. So now as I click and drag, I'm getting, I can click and drag over and over and you'll see my layer. If I just isolate that, all it did is add some color to it. Okay, and then I could maybe play with blend modes. Maybe I wanna make this multiply or screen, or I don't know, something crazy. Lots of, I, typically I go to multiply. I, I went from darkening things. Uh, here's another, I, okay. Guys, I got a stream for like three hours today. I don't know if I'm going to do it all on this one specific stream. I might reset halfway through. We'll see. But, Marche, I want to make sure I answer your questions. So if you have other questions, you want to see something different, totally let me know. Um, yeah, if I don't know what to do, I just start playing around. Yep, literally that's what happened with the stream. I just jumped on here and I was like, well, I hope something happens. And fortunately you asked some questions and now we're now we're doing stuff. Um, yeah, I just kind of play around and probably a good example of that. Some of my past streams where I'm designing um, the stickers or I'm designing like the surfboard brand, I do some of that where I just kind of goof around until something sticks. Um, if I want to change this color after the fact, what I can do, if I tried to fill it right now with this blue, the whole thing, or or a different color, let's let's say I wanted to be, oh, let's make it pink or something. If I hit Option Delete, the whole layer, I tried to point at my screen, but you can't see. I gotta use the mouse. <laughs> the whole layer filled pink. I don't want to do that. I just want to fill in. I just want to change where I have pixels. So up here, 
at the top of my layers window, I have this little row of icons. It says lock. So there's one that looks like a checkerboard and it locks the transparent pixels. I'll change the song here. So what happens, anything transparent, I can't touch. So on this layer, I've got the little lock icon and these transparent pixels are locked. So now if I hit option delete, it only fills the pixels that have pixel data at the same amount. So if it's 50%, it's only gonna fill at 50%. So it's still transparent below it. So if I turn this layer back on, let's make this normal again. So my pixels are still locked on this layer. I could get my eyedropper tool and I could sample different colors and hit option delete to see what that does to it. Anyway, yeah, it's a simple, it's a simple, I don't know, a little hidden gem that is helpful. <clears throat> All right, what else could we do? Let's, let's look at your website again. Okay, so I kind of showed you how to do that yellow and black background thing. We learned how to blur some stuff. There's some other really cool blur filters. Let's turn off that layer. Let's come back here. Let's delete this Gaussian blur. Not the whole layer, just the smart layer. Yeah, so there's a million ways to do the same thing, right? A million is maybe an extreme example, but like even darkening this, right? We learned how to do an adjustment layer with the exposure, right? Drop an exposure layer down and it's underexposed, right? And then we can adjust it, right? We can make it really underexposed, whatever. Uh, we can change the hue and saturation. We could add just a black layer over the top that's got a little bit of opacity, scrub down the opacity, okay? All right, so now let's go back to filter, down to blur. So we just play with the Gaussian blur, but there's a few others here that are pretty cool. Um, blur gallery. I think it's iris blur. We're gonna try it. So it actually opens up like a blur window box thing. And it's, it's thinking about it. Well, it's thinking about it. I'm gonna take a drink of water. So this is pretty handy because you can move and it's going to be a little glitchy for me because I'm streaming and it's pretty memory intensive. So you can move where the blur point is. You can shape it by dragging these handles or rotate it or round it out, whatever you want to do. And then right here, the slider in the middle, I can scrub this change how blurred it is so you can see it gets pretty extreme okay uh there's some more effects over here on the side that we can play with right now we're playing with the iris blur so this is the actual entire blur gallery um we could change this to a field blur okay do some fun stuff uh you're gonna have better results because you're probably not streaming at the same time like i am so i'm gonna click cancel but these are just all ways to take an image, add some visual interest. Maybe it's kind of a crappy photo and make it look like it's got some depth to it. Maybe, it, you know, if it's just in the background, we're just trying to do some stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything outside of the iris, it'll blur. Exactly. So um, another way you could do that same effect, how I used to do it before the blur gallery. Let's duplicate this. Go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur the whole thing like crazy. Notice my edges didn't repeat, and I don't remember how to fix that. Let's back it down a little bit. Okay, uh, and then what we're gonna do is add a mask down here. We're gonna click on this little icon <clears throat> that has a square with a circle in it, right next to the FX. And it's gonna add a layer mask to this thing. So now anything I paint on this layer with black is gonna hide, anything with white is gonna reveal. So here's where this gets cool. I'm gonna hit the letter D to get the default swatches, black and white. I'm gonna hit the letter X to swap it. So black is in the front. I could paint with the brush. I hit the letter B to get my brush tool and I could just start painting with a brush. That's kind of a cool effect. This is not what I'm intending to show you yet, but basically what's happening here is it's masking. So anything black on this mask is gonna hide it. So it's just turning off the blurry layer that's on top. If I turn off this, it's easier to see the layer below showing through, okay? So we just have a blurry layer on top of a not blurry layer. That's all that's going on. And we're masking it, okay? 
So if I hit Command Delete, instead of Option Delete, Command Delete is gonna fill with my background color, which is white, and it's gonna, Command Delete is going to fill this mask with white, basically erasing what I did. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm gonna letter G to get my gradient tool on this mask layer, okay? I'm gonna change my gradients across the top right now. It's a linear gradient. I'm gonna change to a radial gradient, and I'm still using this foreground to transparent, so black to transparent. Okay, so if I click in the middle and drag it out towards the outside, see my mask? It's just a black circle that fades. But see what it does to the image? It fades, it adds just the blur around the edges. I don't know, it's kind of a cool effect. Um, kind of a cool way to, to get some soft edges and then you can dial it down a little bit. You could use this layer, come over to the opacity and scrub it down a little bit so it's much more subtle. Just a little bit of blur on the edges, okay? So there's, again, a million ways to do the same thing. Uh, but this is cool because you can you can kind of craft some interesting background stuff, all right? Another website I would use, we'll see if they're still around. I haven't actually gone to them in a long time. It's called Subtle Patterns, all right? Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to download this first one all right with my download stack let's unzip that let's open it up all right so we've got some different there we go um oops did I close the wrong one I did there we go so here is a PNG of that pattern what I can do I can bring this into Photoshop. So it's in here kind of like a JPEG, right? It's just a separate file. I go to select all. I'm gonna come over to edit, down to define pattern. I'll let it be that name, Moroccan flower dark. We'll click okay. Now I can jump over into any of my other documents. I'm gonna add a new layer. Uh, let's see, I think I can fill it with any color, but let's go to edit. We'll go down to fill and we'll do 50% gray. Now what I can do is come down here to effects and I can do a pattern overlay. Let's go find my patterns. And look, it's right down here, the one that we just downloaded. In my, layer style, in my layer styles, we just added a pattern overlay. I can scale it up, scale it down, whatever I want to do, I'll click OK. So now I've got this pattern, <clears throat> and maybe you want to do some of the effects we were just playing around with. Let's add a layer above it. Let's, let's um, hit the letter D to get my black fill again, hit letter G to get my gradient tool, and maybe I just kind of burn in the edges a, a little bit. Oh, but look at they're doing the radio ones. So let's oh we do radio. Let's let's inverse. We'll reverse it. We'll click up here in the options bar to reverse it. Click and drag out from the middle. And now I've got like this cool little, I don't know. Look at how quickly that looks fancy. It's literally two lit excuse me, it's two layers. Let's scrub down the opacity a little bit on these corners. Maybe we want to try and make this yellow. Let's drag this layer up above it. Turn that on. Change this to linear dodge add. So many ways to work. I hope this gives you lots of ideas, Marche, and it doesn't stress you out because I started showing you a lot of stuff. Um, but truly, there, there's a lot of ways to work and to do things. And so, um, the biggest thing is like, how do I open something up? How do I crop it? And then how do I export it? So that's how I design for the web. I'll bring stuff in. Um, file sizes are kind of loose. If it's a header image, it's about 2000 pixels wide, unless the theme tells you exactly what to use. Layer styles is my favorite. If, I've ever, if I'm ever stuck with something, trying to do something creative, jumping up here to the layer styles and just kind of playing around with it is a really great way 
to see what happens. Now you'll notice these layer styles don't affect this one because what's happening is we have a pattern overlay applied to a gray. So we could jump in here and inside my pattern overlay there, I could play with my blend modes and see what happens, but it's going to change how this pattern sits on top of this 50% gray. So it's not going to get as extreme of results. So what you might do, what would I do? How would I flatten that? I forget. Um, I'm going to make a new layer above it. Command click both of these layers and hit command E, which is the same as going to layer merge layer. So I'm just merging them together. And what's going to happen is it's going to remove that effect and just smash it all together. So now this is like basically like just a flat image. It's no longer a repeating pattern. Okay. Now, if I play around with these blend modes, you're gonna get all kinds of crazy chaos because it's going to interact with the layers below it. Um, let's see. Lots of questions. Okay. So you have to learn to work with text. How did you get better and learn text? What looks good with good or what looks good with what? Um, the best shortcut I could give you right now. Um, yeah. And that's just one pattern. Like the subtle patterns.com has all kinds of cool stuff that you could do the same thing with. There's hundreds of patterns. Okay. Um, check out fonts adobe.com uh, let's maybe not show passwords I don't think passwords are gonna pop up but um, if you guys saw my email there don't use that email because I don't check that for this if you want to get in touch with me email me at Derek at Derek Mitchell.com Be sure to like and subscribe. If you're learning something, if you're loving this and you can throw a thumbs up on the video, let me know. Hit that thumbs up button or subscribe if you can. Tap the notification. All right. Give me a second while I open some stuff up. Okay. <clears throat> and we're back. So um, go to fonts.adobe.com. And then right up here, it's kind of blends in. Check out font packs. This is a great place to explore some different fonts that pair well together. Really, really great place to start just to get some ideas. Uh, the other thing you could do is um, type web font pairings. Okay, because I struggle with that too. I, I really do. Um, I have a hard time knowing what to choose and I can get lost in that. So a lot of times this is what I'll do. I've found a few of my favorite fonts that I tend to stick with, uh, but there are some, some great resources like what, what fonts pair well together, web design, top 50 Google font pairings, ultimate font, uh, ultimate collection of Google font pairings. Um, but yeah, just Google web font pairings and that's going to get you all kinds of great resources to help you out. All right. So, um, let's see here. Yeah. So many ways we could use this. Oh, you know what else I've done? Um, okay. So I hope that helps you out as far as setting up files, how I set up my images. Um, what we could do. How long have I been on the stream? I might need to restart because if I go too long, things tend to get weird. Uh, the stream starts to get off sync. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my web design process when it comes to like exporting specific images and trying to find like creative images. Uh, there's so much you can do. So... So we've got a, an almost three month old and a one and a half year old and they, they tag teamed us last night. We didn't get much sleep. So I am feeling it. I'm tired. <laughs> so 
hopefully I noticed a couple of times that I'm trying to talk and I keep saying the words backwards. <laughs> I gotta get some sleep. All right. <clears throat> so let's see, let's see, let's see. What can we do? Let me just check. We updated this stuff here. Um, Yeah, no, your website's just placeholders. I, I probably should say that to everybody else. It's just placeholders. She's working on it. It's looking good. You're getting there. Obviously, a lot of work to do. So, what we could do... Um, until you learn graphic design. Does, do you feel... I mean, we, we kind of covered a lot of ground uh, specific to making an image for web design. Um... Do you have any experience working with the tools in Photoshop, like brushes and stuff like that, Marche? Hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> Hope you didn't let me go an hour and a half in the stream and I'm butchering your name. <clears throat> All right. So let's see. Let's see. What do we want to do now? Okay. What I, what I kind of want to do, but I'm not prepared for. So here's a website that I made. Um, and I really like, yeah, putting it all together can be overwhelming. So check this out. This is a website I made and, um, this is like, this is called parallax animation. Okay. Typically the parallax is on scroll where things are scrolling at different speeds. This one is on the mouse move. So as the mouse moves, there's different layers. So there's a fog layer, which is a PNG image, which is how it's transparent, sitting on top of the elk image. And if you look real close, you gotta look real close. There's actually another layer above it across the bottom with the water. And then I think the edge is right along here and sitting on top of a background image. So all these layers are stacked on top of each other and then they're responding to the mouse is how I made that. Um, so I kind of want to show that. So the word parallax comes from animation actually. So um, think of when you're watching like cartoons or, or even when you're driving in the car and you look out your window and the telephone poles and the street signs and the things that are close to you, people walking on the sidewalk, they look like they're going by fast if you're driving fast on your car. But as you look further off in the distance, the buildings look like they're moving a little bit slower. And then as you look into like the far distance here in Montana, we've got mountains. So if you look, you can see the mountains look like they're hardly moving at all. Or maybe the clouds in the skies look up, they look like they're hardly moving at all. So that's a parallaxing effect. So the things that are further in space tend to hold still, but the things that are closer are moving by faster. Um, so it caused that illusion of, well, it's not an illusion in real life, but anyway, in web design, you get that illusion of like 3d space. Wow. Anyway, so I kind of want to show how I did this. I know I've done it before. I did it on one of my streams actually. So maybe I don't need to do it again. Let me look real quick. While I'm pulling this up. Yeah, Marche, it's a it's a work in progress. Like I started graphic design in high school with Photoshop like five or something. So I've been doing this for over 20 years. <clears throat> and just adding to it every day, picking up a new trip tip or a new trick. You'll get there. You'll get there. If you want to, maybe you don't want to, but as far as, uh, as far as it being learnable, it's absolutely learnable. Like I'm the, I'm not necessarily talented. I'm just driven to learn as much as I can. And I just never stopped learning. Right. But everything I did clicking the mouse and moving buttons around, like you could totally do that. Like it takes zero drawing skills. Uh, okay. Let me look. Sorry. I made this. I don't think all my videos are showing up. 
and I know you can't see my screen. I'm just trying to look for something real quick. Hmm. Well, that's strange. <laughs> so would you say the courses you're going or the, the, the stuff you're going through in my courses still feel relevant? You're just trying to learn it all at one time and it's overwhelming or are things breaking and not working how I say they do? Cause the software has updated. All right. I can't find what I'm looking for. So strange. Bummer. Okay. Well, oh, here we go. Hey, oh, look at that. Um, so I'm, oh, that's trippy. <laughs> I could talk to myself. Hey dude. All right. I'm so dumb. All right. Uh, right here. When I hover over my Behance profile, it says optimal dimensions, 3,200 by 410. So if I was designing for my web stuff, I would just, it's the exact same approach that we just talked about, right? File, new document. What did it say it was? 3,200. By 410. Uh, this one, I don't know if they care if it's 72 or 144. I'll leave it as 72. I'll create that. So do you, it feels like you're starting in the middle of a course. Did you, did you start in the middle of a course or did you jump in with a poster in the, the first stuff? Uh, the other thing that course specifically doesn't do a good job of, well, okay. There's two ways to look at it. Either you can say it doesn't do a good job of like building on skills or you could say it does a great job of teaching you real world samples. So when I was in college first learning how to design, I had a book that was called Adobe Classroom in a book. And it was like that thick. And it was every single tool and button and window possible in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. And it was so boring. And, and it was like, it was like, how, when am I ever gonna use this random tool, right? They didn't give specific examples. They just said, oh, here's the tool. Here's how it works. And so with my course, I tried to just jump into the middle of projects and be like, Hey, we're going to learn the tools as we go. Cause there's tools in here that I either have never used or have not used in years. Um, as I look at this, so if I come down here, I click these little three dots to edit the toolbar. I mean, there's so many tools and like the note tool. I don't use the note tool. I don't use the count tool. I don't use really any of those tools. I haven't used the slice tool for web design or the slice select tool in web design in probably seven years or more. Um, I use these tools a little bit spot healing. I don't really use the pattern stamp tool. I don't use the art history tool. Like, so there's a lot of extra fluff in here that can be overwhelming as you look at this and you might think, Oh my gosh, there's just, there's just too much. I just don't know any of it. But really, all I got to know is how to open a document, do a couple things, and then save it for how you need it, right? Like <laughs> if we're dumbing it down as far as we can. Um, I use the brush tool all the time. I use the type tool and the selection tools. Um, so, man, that's great feedback, Marcia. I appreciate it. Um, and if you get stuck, feel free to email me at Derek at Derek Uh, I'll do my best to get back to you. I do have like a thousand emails in there. I got to go through. So, um, if I see your name pop up, I'll, I'll try and jump into that. Um, so it sounds like, but you're in the vault. Are you, did you jump into the Slack group? If you haven't check it out, there should be a link for you to join in and be able to like Slack message me directly. Uh, if things get, if you get stuck on stuff. All right. 
So <clears throat> if you are in the vault and you're not in Slack yet, make sure you check that out. It's the best way to get directly in touch with me if you get stuck on stuff. Um, as far as feeling like you're coming into the middle, you kind of are, because that's kind of it's kind of how I designed that course a little bit. Um, so, so yeah, I do kind of just jump right into it. We just kind of go. So it, it's just kind of how that course was designed. Um, so anyway, yeah, check that out when you get a minute. That would be awesome to see you in there. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. So, all right, guys. Oh, this song. I wish I could delete it, but it's on a public playlist that I can't. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> what else should we do? That pretty much, that was a good stream. I feel like a couple hours long. Um, so definitely check that out, Marche, if you want to uh, play around with these. Um, do you do you like this direction or were you trying something different? Like, is this what you had in mind as far as changing the background image on your website? Let's see if I can pull this back up. And you could probably make this a video too. That would be a cool stream. Can you do video backgrounds on your theme? I think you can. <clears throat> it's been a long time. Uh, I use a theme mostly called salient now. So I don't know how theme goes X theme. It's been a while since I've done video stuff on that, on that theme. But we could do some sort of a video background on this too. That could look cool, especially because you have an Envato Elements account. Okay. That was the start of bringing up adding text and all the stuff. Yes, I can do video. So a video background, because you're a video company, might be the way to go for this. Um, <clears throat> so if, are you doing this for somebody else or is this you and you do video? Cause if you can do video, then making a video background for this would be awesome. Um, I use, let's see, video online dash convert.com. So I use this website, which looks super spammy. I probably have some sort of malware. <laughs> I don't know. I've been using this for years. I've never had an issue, but don't click the big green button. <laughs> um, so what you do when you're doing videos for a website, so let's say you have your video files like 30 seconds long or whatever, try to keep it like 20 megs or under, uh, it's gonna need an OGV file, a WebM file, and an MP4 file. So what you end up doing is you click on the convert to OGV format and you upload your files real quick and click start conversion. And it'll just download it right to your download stack or wherever you save your, your downloads. And then you can upload those three different video types to your video, I'm sorry, to your website, to WordPress, and then use those as video backgrounds. So that's how I do that. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have a good sample of that that I can show. I think I can show this. Hang on for two seconds. I don't think this one's gonna spool up for me like I want it to. Excuse me, time for some coffee. All right, so I'm just trying to open up a site real quick. Okay, yeah, I can show this. So, Here's a website I did, <clears throat> and this background is just a video. Let me restart it real quick. So it just shows this, and the way that I made this, this is a video, this whole thing is a video with a black mask over the top and a video behind it. So the black is scaling up. I could probably open up Premiere and show you guys. Anyway, I shot this video in my garage, actually. So, um, so this whole thing's a video background. And then when you scroll down, it's just more web stuff. I designed the logo too. This is one of my favorite logos. 
Um, anyway, so, so you can do some cool stuff with videos. Like typically you think of a video as like just a background element, but in this case I made it the intro. So it looked like it was an animated text thing. Anyway, random. Um, yeah, and that's tough, Marche. So, so, so everybody, uh, so here you go. Let me just add your comment to the stream. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I explained that you wouldn't just, uh-oh. We good? Sorry, it just gave me an error message. Um, yeah, it, there's, there's so many things. It's like, how would you ever know that shortcut? Or how would you ever even know what to call it to even Google it? Uh, and so that's where I highly recommend. So Marche is in my vaults membership, which you can get. Uh, you can get it if you go to my website at DerekMarshall.com. And in there, uh, you do have access to me directly through Slack. Okay. So you can go to courses and then right here down to vault to check that out. Um, but if you're and no pressure, like no pressure at all to join. I also have a Facebook group. Um, so facebook.com. Oh, I got to open up a different browser because I don't use that. Um, so the Facebook group has, I lost track. I don't know. I think we're at like 17,000 members now or 18,000 members. It's a bunch. Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers lately, but it's a great place to post questions and get feedback. It's called complete graphic design and I'm pulling it up right now. Just a second. people do we have right now 17.8 thousand wow that's crazy <clears throat> so um this is the group this is what it looks like it's complete graphic design and discussion so if i scroll down you know people will say like hey here's a logo for this how is it what do you think and you can get feedback you can show off your work and i do it i i don't do as good of a job jumping in here as i'd like to it's been pretty crazy having a couple new kids in the family, new babies. So things have been a little nuts. Um, but this is an amazing community of great people to help you out when you're stuck. If I can't jump in and help you out. And so definitely check that out. Facebook.com slash groups slash complete graphic design. Uh, yeah, Marche, jump into the, I thought you were in, you're just in the Photoshop course. Now I understand your confusion. Jump into the, um, graphic design bootcamp course, graphic design bootcamp. While we're at it, uh, this is going to be your very next question. You're going to get stumped on. I'll show you this in a second. So yeah, guys, check out this group. Um, I actually deleted Facebook and Instagram from my phone, mostly for privacy reasons. And also because it turned into a giant black hole where I was trolling instead of actually like contributing with creative posts. So I just deleted it. Uh, so anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, check out the graphic design bootcamp. So one thing you're going to have a problem with, we have, gosh, I just got to make a new video for that. I just, I must do that as soon as possible. Um, so in, in that sample, in that video, we end up doing see we let's just grab a picture of somebody with hair there we go let's just download this one i'm just going to show you real quick um <clears throat> so we do this section where we make a poster Okay, and here's where it's gonna go sideways for you. We we do selections, and I show you how to do a bunch of different selection techniques, okay? With this latest version of Photoshop, all you have to do, go to Window, go down to Properties, which I already see right here, scroll down, and I don't see what I need right now because this is still locked. So I'm gonna double click on this layer, and now, 
I have these quick actions here to remove the background or select the subject. So if I remove the background, boom, literally one button and the background is gone. Okay. So uh, it's a little bit different in the version that I teach in the class. So if I put a layer behind it, you can see this does enough, an amazing job on selecting hair. Okay. So then if we want to refine that, if I command click on this shape right here, the selection, it'll reload the selection. Okay. And then if I get a selection tool selected, any one of them, hit the letter M or whatever, I can click up here on select and mask. And I can refine my selection. So this specific step is going to cause problems for you because we have a newer version of Photoshop now. So you could probably just skip that, that one section and just do the selection like this and you'll be golden. So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, <clears throat> cool. All right. Hey, Marche, thanks for hanging out with me today. I enjoyed the comments and getting to help you out. Um, it was nice because I didn't know what I was going to do when I jumped in here. <laughs> so it worked out good. Uh, jump into that Slack group when you get a minute. Good luck on your website. Oh, I just smacked myself in the face with the microphone. I think I'm going to take a break. And I might stream some more tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I might reset. So, um, man. That remove background button is so good. Look at that. I'm just amazed every time I use that. It's incredible. Um, as I look into it a little bit further though, okay. I should probably check this out. Check this out. His ear got kind of cropped off. So here's how you would fix that. We go to select, deselect. I'm on the mask layer. My streaming schedule is there is none. It's, are my kids screaming? or napping or playing outside or not. And can I stream <laughs> with minimal distraction? That's my stream schedule, which I know is terrible and a horrible way to build an audience, but that's what it is right now. Uh, I would like to work on that and I'm working towards doing better at that, but currently it's kind of whatever. Um, here I'm on this mask layer. I'm going to bring back some of his ear. I'm gonna get a brush. Letter B for the brush tool. Let's do a soft round. And uh, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. I like to use the, on your keyboard next to the letter P, you've got these left and right bracket keys. So when I hit the left bracket or the right bracket, it makes the brush bigger or smaller. There's all kinds of shortcuts to make the brushes bigger or smaller. I think you can right click and drag, but the way I have my settings, it doesn't work. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm on this mask layer. If I paint with black, it's gonna hide it. So it's gonna cut into that. All I have to do is hit X to swap. And I know that that's the shortcut by hovering over this little double arrow thing. And it says, hey, switch foreground and background colors by hitting X. So now if I paint with white, it brings it back. That's why masks are so cool because it's non-destructive versus like physically erasing away from an image, okay? So I can hit X if I go too far. And just kind of refine my selection a little bit. There we go. Anyway, that's better. But for, you know, for pretty much how I'm using this, that selection is perfect. How's this ear? This ear is a little weird too. We can fix that. Bring some of it back by painting white on the mask layer. Absolutely. So I'm using a brush. I don't use the eraser hardly ever. Um, Cause an example of that, let's pretend I'm just gonna Command J to jump cut a copy of this, turn off the one below. I'm gonna drag this mask to the trash. It's gonna ask me if I wanna apply the mask or delete it. If I hit apply, now I physically have a shape that's been cut out and we can see in my thumbnail. It, there, there's nothing, all that data is now gone. If I come over here and I look at my thumbnail, if I hit shift and click on my mask, I can hide the mask for a second. So the image still has all of its data behind it. It's still there. 
and this little lock icon in between locks the mask with the image. I can move the whole thing around. If I unlock it, shift click the mask, and now I move, you can see the mask stays in place, but I'm moving the image. Command Z to undo. Click between the mask and the layer to lock it again. And now I can move this around. But this layer, there, there, there is nothing but exactly what is here. So let's say I'm working and I'm erasing with an eraser tool and I'm going nuts and oh, dang it, I cropped his ear off. I can't, there's nothing, it's gone. I erased it. There's nothing to bring back. Um, so that's why we work with masks. Yeah, cool stuff. I feel like these are important lessons that need to be included in my course, and I just didn't. But I learn from students who ask these questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, the mask thing, the mask and the smart object thing. So um, smart objects is another thing. Um, let's pretend like you have something in Illustrator. Um, so I'm in Illustrator now, which is vector based. And here I've got text. I can go to object. No, I'm sorry. Type create outlines. And now it's a vector shape. So I can like, if you're making a logo, right? You can do whatever you want with these shapes, extend them out, whatever. Um, but I could copy this come over into Photoshop and paste it. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna paste it as pixels or smart objects. So if I paste as pixels, same thing. I can paste it in here as pixels, there it is. I'm gonna command V again, this time as a smart object and click okay. And this is very similar to, it's so tough to see. So this layer that I did as pixels only, there's nothing in this bottom right corner of the thumbnail. The one above it has this like paper icon looking thing and that's a smart object. So the pixels, if I change my mind and I'm like, hey, actually I want this to be huge and I go to scale it up, it gets blurry, right? It kind of blows up because it came in small. It's pixels only. So you're basically scaling up the pixels and it's guessing, it's doing what's called interpolation and it's guessing what pixels to put in between as it scales up and it just does a terrible job. With a smart object, if I scale this thing up, Look at how crispy that stays. Okay, and that's because we brought in a vector. If you brought in a photo and do the same thing, the photo might still blow up. But I can double click here on the smart object and it's gonna open this up in Illustrator in the original format of whatever it was. This is called vector smart object. So this isn't the same one that I did over here. This is, this is a separate embedded file. But now I could come in here and I'd be like, oh, hey, actually I wanna change the color on this and I wanna I don't know, do other things to this thing, whatever, it doesn't matter. Do some stuff, save it, close it. And it doesn't save to your computer, it saves within this Photoshop file. And now this smart object has been updated and you can't, you just can't do that with a flat, regular rasterized layer. Um, <clears throat> I work with smart objects as long as I can. It does make your files a little bit bigger, but what you gain on the back end is so much better. So then though, let's pretend that you're trying to do stuff to this smart object. Like for example, um, like I can't erase this. I can't brush on it. If I hit the brush, see how it's got that slash, like I can't do anything. It's, it's a smart object. So let's say you are done and you want to like be able to destructively work with this thing. You can right click and you can where is it at? Why can't I see it? Oh my goodness. Did I click the wrong spot? There it is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, rasterize layer. Okay. So rasterizing a layer is going to kind of break it apart and flatten it. So it's no longer a smart object, but after you've done your stuff to it, you can right click and convert to a smart object. Now the difference being, this time when I double click on it, because I broke it apart, now it just sees it as pixel data inside of Photoshop. So it's a smart object in here, but I can't 
it's no longer vector inside of even though it says it but that's because of the layer that's what the layer name was um so undo now that it's rasterizing it my eraser tool and i could you know go nuts erasing stuff whatever i want to do right click convert to smart object double click and see it just pulls out that separate layer but it's no longer vector anyway dude what's up adam welcome to the stream i'm just about to shut it down <laughs> uh we had a lot of fun you can watch a replay if you want um nothing too crazy just talking about uh web graphics and stuff how to make web graphics <clears throat> so adam check this out though so pretty look at this thing it's a monster this is the black magic 6k pro so cool the screen is huge the screen is like i don't know it's huge so that's what i get to set up later and figure out how to use for the podcast fun stuff i don't know where to put this thing so anyway yeah uh what else what else what else that's pretty much it guys um oh adam check these out too shh don't tell got a holographic sticker done yeah that screen is ridiculous see you dude um <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I could answer questions all day long. I love this stuff, and I love that I get to help. Um, check out Marche. Check out um, what am I trying to say? Slack. Jump on Slack. Uh, if you have questions, I hope that helps with everything we got going on. And I think I'm going to go get some dinner, regroup. Maybe we'll stream again. I don't know. But if you don't see me, uh, I will definitely be on again pretty much every day this week. So uh, stay tuned. And if you're not on my email list yet, uh, jump in on my email list. DerekMitchell.com. Go to this. To, uh, any, any one of my, any one of my pages at the bottom has the newsletter. You can join there or on this tutorials page right here. You can join and get notified when I go live. If you're on Behance, be sure to follow and hit that thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, subscribe and tap the bell so you get notified when I go live. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll catch y'all later. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I wanna remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can and uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page I'd really appreciate that uh, but again just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and I'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out so the best way that I can help you is by you commenting on the videos below I read those comments I engage with them as soon as I can if I can when I see them so if it's live I'll try and answer you right away if this is a replay you can still comment on the video Video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.